What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. And also, thank you to my new subbies that have subbed with me. And I just want to thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. And in today's video, we are going to be having our gospel table talk. As I had told you guys on the other day, me and my husband, this is something that we will be doing. We will be jumping on here ever so often, uh, doing a table talk, gospel table talk. And this is just to help someone that's along the way about, we have different topics that we'll be talking about. And um, the topic we will be talking about today for our gospel table talk would be the healthy, the things of a healthy marriage. So my husband is going to talk a little bit on some the things of a healthy marriage, and I'm going to elaborate a little bit some on the things of a healthy marriage as well. And this is my husband, Alex Wright. Hello, YouTube. Um, as she said, we, we're sitting here to encourage you guys on, on what it takes to have a healthy marriage. Um, one standpoint from a, a male's point of view, um, to have a healthy marriage is, number one, before you do anything else, you got to have God involved in your marriage. Um, because if you don't have the one true source involved, and you, you will you will go astray every time. Um, so you, you you number one thing and the most important thing that you got to have before you do anything, you got to you got to have God in, involved in your marriage. You got to have some kind of standard of what a marriage is all about. Too many times in this world. We have a we have the wrong standard. God sets a great example of what a marriage should be, how a husband should perform in the marriage, and how we are to to carry ourselves and govern ourselves. So number one, my, I'm just gonna give you three quick things because I know this is supposed to be a short video. And number my number one thing was that you got to have God in your marriage. And number two, in order to, to after you have the Lord in your marriage and God give you the example. You, you got to have uh, love, um, and, and when you have that love, and looking at your, your, your wife or your wifey or whatever you want to call her, your boo, whoever, when you say that, uh, you got to have a love for to take the good and the bad because you, you can't show love to her without first having God in your life showing love to you. Um, and if you have that love that God give you and you share it with her, um, you, then you'll be able to officially and effectively be able to love your wife um, as you love yourself because you, you, you're going you're gonna to be able to show it. You can't give something that you don't have. And that's, that's something that, that me and we, we have a problem a lot of time of showing love and talking love. Seems like it comes easy for the women and the counterparts, but with us, you know, we, we have that hard time to 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 say I love you and to show love is because number one we have to be willing to share what God has given us, and then I guess the third and last thing I'm gonna say just briefly is um, you gonna have to communicate um, with your spouse. Uh, you just can't have a don't have a way of showing or saying what you want to do every time a question come up. You got to be able to communicate what God has for you and what you have in store for your family because basically basic man you you're supposed to be the head you're supposed to be leading this family you're supposed to be uh the example for this family you're supposed to be the provider and every time they look to you to ask you how to you're going to provide for your family then you got to have something more than just i don't know you got to be willing to communicate how and what you're going to do in order to take your family to the next level um and, and that's a responsibility that all men have that when they have, when they marry their wife and they have children, their, their communication skills got to be better than, I just don't know, I don't know, uh, another thing. We got to have more than that because when they ask the question and they're going to ask the question, you got to have a be able to express the plan that you have. And, and, and the no, that when you say no, not right now, let your no right now be involved in a plan with a bigger yes on down the road because some things you just can't do right now but then you're going to make an arrangement to where you can say yes after a while so that's my quick three things that i wanted to share with you just right off the top of my head that you got to have god in your life you got to have that that love that 
that God give you and you, to be able to show it to your, your wife. And then number three, you got to be able to communicate with your wife. Uh, pillow talk is more than just you snoring in her ear. So you got to be able to communicate something worthwhile to, to be able to lead your family. All righty. You heard it from my husband, Alex. So those were some very good uh, gospel table talk for a healthy marriage. And the first, the first, very first one we need that we all need in a marriage. And even if you're not married, if you're single and looking maybe to be uh, get married someday, right? You know, you uh, you need to to have God first and foremost in your marriage, or even if you have a relationship with your uh, with your girlfriend or boyfriend, and looking to one day get married soon, yeah, you got to remember that's your first thing that you have to have in a marriage to work in order for your marriage to be healthy. Now, I, uh, uh, marriages are going to go through. Uh, you're not always going to see eye to eye. Uh, just kind of piggybacking off of my husband. Uh, you, you're going to have disagreements in marriage. So, that, I mean, it's nothing to be scared about. Uh, that just It just comes natural. Uh, that, that you just have to love each other. And, uh, and some of the things that I had wrote down here, uh, you have to set, up, set aside time to be with your spouse. That's that's an important uh, thing as well, factor that we need to put into a healthy marriage. Because uh, when you doing too much and, and and you're not with your spouse, that can that can cause problems to arouse in your marriage. You know, uh, but but you know if you're working or doing you know doing uh, something that's positive, then that's understandable. But when you're out partying and 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 you're married. And, and for that's one thing you're not supposed to be doing. You know, once you done said I do, your partying days is supposed to be over with. So, uh, yeah, you know. just just to add to that, um, she said something there when she said that you that you're supposed to be at home with your wife or your or your family uh, or significant other. Um, if you're going away from that that home all the time. It, it do need to be something that's positive. It need to be that you are out. In our case, as men, as being a provider. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you may have to work an extra job to bring back home what you right. need. And so that way that, that that family can be taken care of. But if you're out skipping out, and you time for you to be at home, to be the wife at your own home. And let's face it, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to be... Uh, we said it's gospel talk, so we uh, we go to keep it real and keep it with the gospel. Um, if you're meddling with other men or other family matters, and you're not taking care of your home, mm -hmm. you you you're worse than the, than the infidel. Infidel, right? Um, and for the for the men and then for the women, you're a busybody. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, you 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 dealing with sister so and so, your best friend family over there, right. and not taking care of your own house. Then you're worse than than what's going on over there because you you got a problem going on here. Right. So she she just hit on some points there. Uh, you got to be at home taking care of your own home. Right. You, you don't know what's going on in your house if you're over there taking care of somebody else's house. Right. So that's right. if we're gonna keep it. We say we're keeping it real. We're gonna we keep, keep it real. We're this gonna keep it real. Talk. Then we, we we can't take care of somebody else's house. Right. Before we take care of our own. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to touch on that just a little bit. Yeah, my husband, he, he said a mouthful. And also, I got uh, to pray for your spouse. You know, it, it may come a day or time when your husband uh, may be weak. He needs somebody, or uh, she needs somebody, whichever on the end it is, may need somebody to step in and pray for them. Uh, you know, we're supposed to pray one for another, mm -hmm. as the Bible says. So, you know, and uh, also... Uh, Continue to date and be romantic with your spouse. That's one thing me and my husband do. <laughs> Every now and then when our girls, our baby girl, allow us to. Because most times she whipped us when we go out to eat anywhere. There's no there's nothing wrong with taking the kids sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you got to do what you got yeah, to do yeah. to spend that quality time. Right, right. So, and, and I don't see nothing wrong with that. I, I, I love my baby girls and I love all, and my husband as well. And I love pet. Uh, Priestess, I call y'all. Yeah, I've met her before, and also you got to have open, open conversations with each other. 
You got to let each other know what's going on. Uh, don't go out and do anything. Uh, say, for instance, when you want to, or I'm going to say take me and my husband, give an example. Uh, when we wanted to uh, uh, remodel our home, we sat down, we had a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. I didn't up and jump and do it. Yes, I did want, you know, some uh, things to be done in the house. I, I know he did as well, but he didn't jump up and just go and run and do it without consulting with me I didn't, and, and vice versa. I didn't run up and do it without consulting with him. We sat down, put our heads together and, and we made it happen. So, and, um, but yeah, did you, was you going to say anything? Uh, you, you just got to be able to play in this thing. Some things that she said, open communications, um, you want something new to happen and, and both parties have to learn to be patient right? in order for God's appointed time for certain things to happen in your life. Um, sometimes we try to make things happen too soon right. and God has not given us the okay yet. Um, this is with the marriage. You, you, you know, one party, you bring it two minds that's, that's thinking totally opposite mm -hmm. from the other. Right. You're bringing them together and they're supposed to function as one. And it, it, sometimes it takes work and it takes patience mm -hmm. to bring those two different personalities together. Um, but if you learn to have that open communication, then you're planning how to do and you, then once you plan and put a plan in place, it should be nobody else on the outside come in between the plan that you made with you and your significant other, your right. spouse, or your, uh, as she said, your your girlfriend or your your boyfriend. If you you, we want you to get to that goal where we can say husband and wife. Right. But if That's you're good. at this time right now, you if you're just girlfriend and boyfriend, uh, these principles will apply in your life. But you. you you know, you want to make sure that you get it right with God. Right. Most of all. Absolutely. And you got to find ways to laugh together. Uh, me and my husband, we, we, I, I'm all the time picking with him. Sometimes he picks with me and you just got to know your, uh, your boundaries. Cause I know sometimes when he come home from work and he don't want to be bothered with and vice versa, you know, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes I pick at him and, you know, I'm just being real with y'all, you know, cause we have arguments, we have spats and, uh, that's in a marriage, you know, but we, but we still love each other. We just, because we have an argument don't mean one go file for the, uh, uh, uh divorce papers that comes along with the marriage. Cause that's, that's other stuff we're going to talk about in this gospel table talk. I mean, cause it's really going to get deep, deep conversations. So I, you know, but we don't have enough time, you know, to tell you all about it. Um, uh, and also I got two more. It, it tell your spouse, you love them. Uh, and showing showing affection, uh, you know, tell your spouse you love them, you know, and uh, uh, with with my husband, he t he and I both tell each other that we love each other all the time, and you know, when we leave for work, I love you. I tell my kids that all the time, and um, it's some it's some of those men we have to learn to do. So it's not like yeah. I said earlier; it's not as easy, right, for us to say it as a woman is, a but woman as it is with our mm -hmm. counterparts. So we have to learn to put more time and effort right. in the sense because we'll walk out the door and never say anything and not never meaning nothing by it, but right. we just walked out on our wife and did not tell them that we love them. And then they thinking, oh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not enough for him today. So we have to be, be more open and more, uh, make more of an effort to, to come back and say, look, Baby, I love you, or honey, I love you, or whatever you call you, your your significant other. If you just say I love you, some of some some guys don't even have a, a, a what was you call them nicknames. Oh yeah. <laughs> some guys don't have nicknames. Some guys just say, look, I love you. Right. And, that, and, you, and you got to know that's when you got to know your partner and your your significant other. If that's the type of woman or type of guy you got, then quit trying to make them be somebody else mm -hmm. that they're not. Just give them time to grow into their place to where they, when you say I love you, and they say that I love you, it's really coming from the general, mm -hmm. from their heart, and not mm -hmm. for something that, you know, I don't want to be, <clears throat> you know, saying I'm saying something that I don't really mean. Right. See, because you're making me be somebody I don't, I'm not. Absolutely. So we have to learn, and I'm going to shut up, but we got to learn mm -hmm. to take care uh, and know our significant others because... Right. If we tell them I love you, then you ought to be able to mean it from the heart. Mm -hmm. Because if you tell me you love me, the next day you call me out of my name, then I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking that you, that love that you really have is really good for me because you, you just told me you love me right. one moment, 
and then you call me something else the next. Mm -hmm. So you know, bitter and sweet water don't come out of the same source. We got that. We got to learn to when we say it, say what we mean, and then and really mean it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I just say I love you and I really mean it, that means that you are my whole world and I really do love you. Just because I don't say I love you like um, you say you love me and call me all kind of different little <laughs> nicknames. See, I'm just keeping it real and, and, and you're my whole world. And I just said three letters, I love you. And that's all it was. Mm -hmm. But then you're expecting me to say something else because you, you see something else that I'm not. And and that, for me to go that route and say that I love you, then that I'm putting words or mm -hmm. making you say something right. That, that that's not right, right, and it's not you. So you we want to be sure that when we say it, we say it with sincerity and mean it from our hearts, and not just something a cliche or a slang of words. Mm -hmm. So when she said, "Tell your spouse, your spouse is looking for you to to give them a uh, a confirmation, assurance that you have you have love for them, right. and and uh, you show it all the time. And sometimes it's just good just to say, "I love I you, I love you," mm -hmm. and be done with it. Alrighty. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this gospel, our very first session of our gospel table talk. And you can look forward to many more gospel table talks that we will have. And this is to help uh, someone and also to help me and my husband, yes. you know, because I'm going to let you know, right, we are not perfect. We're not in any way, shape, uh, or form or fashion trying to, trying to, uh, pretend like we're some, you know, doing something that we're not because we're not perfect. Because we, like I said before, we have little arguments as any other marriage do, but uh, and we still love each other. But uh, that that comes a part of the marriage. And um, but he he does his his part as a man, and I strive to do what I do for a woman on my part. So uh, I am going to uh, so you guys do not forget to uh, watch us on my channel, The Right Connection. For uh, on every Wednesday, we'll be having Bible uh, study here in our home, and also I'll be putting up different uh, content as well. And so, uh, is there anything else you want? Yeah. Well, alrighty, guys. I hope you enjoyed our very first session of the Gospel Table Talk. And until next time, you guys be blessed and have a wonderful day. Bye.